Alrighty guys, I know it's been a minute. Uh, I'm literally still setting up my camera as I'm recording. That's great. Very professional. Um, and I wanted to kind of discuss a couple of my recent models, actually. Sorry about the random cut there. Uh, my fan was on and I uh, thought that it might pick up on camera, so I just took it off. So, the first thing is this car right here which is a Chrysler Imperial. It's very much a wreck. I just have a bunch of stuff sitting on it, like it's been sitting there. And I kind of toyed with it a little bit, put some futuristic parts on the back of it to kind of give it the retro future look that I was trying to go for. And underneath the car, it's done in silver to kind of hammer home that it's a not a traditional kind of regular car. I love that front end though. It's such a unique looking grill, I guess. And that hood scoop there, which was an option for the kit just to give it more of a different vibe, I guess. So yeah, that's this thing, which I think the weathering came out okay. Not perfect, but I definitely tried to try that color out again, that kind of greenish color. It's not perfect, but it'll do. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of wrecks recently. Um, I have one right here, which is a die cast. Die casts are great for it. So you have the opening doors. This is an old futuristic police car. I say futuristic because in the universe this is a new car. Well, it was. Very inspired by the highway patrol car from Fallout New Vegas that you could find. Just sitting around the world. You can't really interact with it. You could shoot it. Don't do that, though. Don't do that to any cars in the Fallout universe. Very, very bad idea. You kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> if you've played the Fallout games, you know. And I believe it's raining again. Yes, it's raining. I'm going to have to close my window. Hang on. Yep, it's raining again. Okay. Um, so, next up is actually a full, completed build. And that's this thing. The NCR patrol truck. Or picker up. And, um... This kind of came to be... Because I had bought a Ravel, same year, 56 Ford F100. And I painted it with the intent of making it a wreck. The paint got screwed up really, really badly. And I'm thinking I could probably salvage it. But it just turned out way too terrible that I'm like, I can't display this. So that was kind of a bummer. Then I went down to a CVS and found a 56 Ford diecast sitting there. It's red with black fenders and just decided to use that. So I built it into something completely different. Um, this is the diecast. We got the New California Republic on the side, the NCR, which is on the doors. Just a very interesting pickup. Probably patrols the Mojave. Looking for Legion. And I didn't weather the NCR signs because I imagine that they're new. Like they were just put on there. This thing's been patrolling the Mojave and then they just decided to put them on there. Or maybe they cleaned them off. You know, to kind of show that even though the truck's dirty... They clean off the signs to show that they are, in fact, NCR. So, that's the NCR Picker Up. And speaking of Picker Up, I recently got a 118 skill, the Wand Company Picker Up, which is a beautiful die cast. I'm not going to show it off in this video because it is unbelievably huge because it's 118 scale, and I hate 118 scale vehicles, but since it was Fallout, I made the exception, so. The next one that we have is another wreck, which is the 
Cherry Bomb. Based on the Cherry Bomb from Fallout 4, which is a car designed to break the sound barrier. I'm not really sure how accurate that is, considering it's in a Forza game and it tops out at around 270 to 280, I think it does, in, fall, in, uh, in Fallout. In Forza. So, not breaking the sound barrier, but very much supercar. Um, this was a Batmobile that I picked up at a toy store for a pretty good price, actually. Like, not bad at all. Um, and I looked it up just to see if this was a rare kit. It isn't, thankfully. So I didn't feel bad about making it into this. You can see is the interior, which is painted. And I didn't do too much detail on the bottom. It is painted brown. But considering I'm going to just display it like this as a wreck sitting on the floor, you're never going to look under there. I'm not going to display it flipped up like that or anything. So it doesn't really matter. If this was a 4x4 four four, like that, it would matter. But since it's a wreck, you're not going to see the underside. It's going to stay in place. It doesn't really matter that much. But it is painted a rusty brown under there, so it works. The gauges, <clears throat> the rear of the car is very, very rusty because, uh, well, we had a bit of an oopsie there. <laughs> the red paint kind of acted weirdly. Don't know why. When I applied a dull coat, it started to, like, crinkle up and everything. And same thing that happened to the, pick to the pickup truck, the Ford F100. And I was like, oh, shit. So I kind of just went heavy with rusting this area. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to save it. This is the back of the car with the taillights. But I mean, this one's... It, it's not bad, you know? It looks okay. For my second... Or third wreck, actually. I guess second wreck of, of a model. The other one was a diecast. It's not terrible. It works. <laughs> I'm actually working on another universe, another post-apocalyptic universe, not the one that has the dragons in it, um, but the other one I'm working on is kind of like a mix of Rage, uh, Titanfall, and Fallout. So a lot of stuff is retro future with 50s cars like this. Uh, one of the reasons actually why I chose this was the big fins, because it has a very 50s look to it, but it doesn't resemble any car that we have I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I was working on uh, another post-apocalyptic world that has retro future, kind of a mix of uh, Fallout. You have a bit of Rage and um, Titanfall mixed in there because there's giant mechs. That kind of thing. Um, instead of vaults, people are kept in stasis in space and they're they're not experimented on like they are in the fallout universe um they're people who are genetically engineered and kept in stasis similar to that of carbonite from uh star wars where you're kind of frozen in like this metal kind of stuff or whatever the hell it is kind of looks like stone uh and you're just kind of kept in stasis in the space for when the apocalypse happens your ship will come back down and You'll have to rebuild society. And that is what happens to one of the main characters. Though it is implied that she was put there unwillingly. That she did not want to become what she is. And one of the first things she does is just, well, go home. When she lands back to Earth, she's like, well, I, I'm going to get home. And her, everything is just bombed out and destroyed. <clears throat> I also got this. The M2 Machines Titanium 57 Chevy. I bought it literally because of the color because this is a mwah, beautiful color. Absolutely love it. The color of this is beautiful. I even love the color of the interior. That beautiful leather brown goes so well with that nice silver color. Grayish silver. Oh, and it wobbles. Fantastic. Uh, every single time 
And I, I don't care that this is a limited edition that I probably shouldn't have taken it out of the box. I don't give a shit because M2 Machines is crap. And I wish that they were good. I want to say good things about them. This is a beautiful mold of a 57 Chevy Bel Air. Everything is molded nicely. It has full chassis detail, which is very, very nice. But their stuff is crap. Every single time I get something from them, whether it's a Challenger, Camaro, Chevy Bel Air, every single time something is broken or doesn't work. For example, this one, the door doesn't close, doesn't stay flush. Great. And there's a really bad mess up there in the paint. You know, if M2 Machines could deliver a good product that wasn't defective every single time I get one, I would have good things to say about them because they make beautiful molds, but they just don't work. Oh my god, I want to love them. I really do. If I sound like I'm being harsh, I don't mean to be, but I kind of have to be because they, they're they not like Jada. Jada, if there's something wrong with a Jada diecast, they're only $20 or $15 sometimes. They're cheap. M2 machines are close to like 40 bucks. Some of them are even more than that. It's unacceptable to have something like that, you know? And a higher price range, you expect higher quality. Ugh. I'm annoyed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to get this frustrated on camera. But yeah. Uh, I love the color of this thing. It's beautiful. It has a nice matte feel to it. And it says titanium on the back window, which is pretty damn cool. But yeah, um, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about unboxing this thing because, as always, there's a problem. So yeah, I think that'll just about do it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.